Here's to another episode of Uninterrupted the Shop, full of memorable and very unpredictable moments. Cheers, Cheers. to that. I'm so like tedious with my schedule. Like if I say I'm doing this, I'm doing that. If it don't start at this time, I'm That's an understatement. Yeah, this fucking guy showed up for a meeting there five minutes later. They had me, I was pissed. Uh, See, I'm like, I'm wired like that too. Yeah. That's just I'm how walking wired. there five minutes late with his fucking hey, with his goddamn lemon shit water and shit. With his stupid ass lemon water sit on the desk. Don't say good morning or nothing. I was like, I was like, I was late. I can't kick him out of the meeting. The water comes out of the cup, he splashes it, hits me in the eye. I'm like, this motherfucker, man. Come out. I don't wanna die for them to miss me. Yes, I see the things that they wishing on me. Hope I got some brothers that outlive me. They gon' tell the story was different with me. God's plan. God's plan. I can't do this on my own. Hey, no. I've been me since Scarlet Road. Hey, God's plan. God's plan. Draymond's wedding, his wedding was like a party. It was so much fun. I told him he had to get married every year. It was, uh... I'm still checking my mailbox. <laughs> oh, man, you didn't get an invite? No chance this man was showing up. <laughs> he would have been like, KD. KD ain't show up. Oh. I, 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 I called Did you invite KD? Like KD? Of course I invited KD. He didn't come? He would have not showed That's up. When, like, when you invited KD, point. what you think the percentage was he may show or not show? The way he sold it to me, I thought he was for oh, sure. You spoke to him. It wasn't just through the mail. <laughs> <laughs> the way Slim sold it to me. What did he say? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh he, I mean, he told me he was going to come in there and find him a girl. Oh. <laughs> Something of that nature. Yeah. And you were like, come have a fly. Have at it. And he. Had a good time. Yeah. And it didn't happen. So, Brian has always said there was people at his wedding that he, if he had to do it again, he would rejigger the list. Do you already feel like that three weeks later? <laughs> I already feel like 100%. Re already, there's people like, I wouldn't invite these people. For sure, man. It, there's definitely people that was at our wedding. They def no way to get an invite. Why? Why? Because, yeah. I mean, one, they, I mean, you know, you got certain people that just show up just for the spectacle. Of course. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's... And then also, me personally, I've, I've just grown to a whole different stratosphere in life that we just don't see life the same. Not especially not 10 years later, like Back. 10 years ago, I wasn't, I wasn't, my pants was way bigger than this. <laughs> my, sh my shirts was way bigger than this. Like I wasn't tucking in my chain. I wasn't, I wasn't drinking like, you know, the sophisticated drinks. Like I was. But that's life. Like, you like, on, as you evolve, you have friendships and relationships for a season because everybody's not supposed to go with you. But as you evolve, you recognize and you grow and you learn, like, not that something's wrong with that group, and it's not like bougie grow, like, we're not talking financial, but it's just mentally, you're spiritually grow, you, yeah. you're, you're more mature. It's what they would say is an acquired taste. For sure. There you go. Not taste my taste you. no more. That ain't yeah. my taste buds. Ain't nothing Same wrong with that. Like, you're, like you're, you invited, but they're like, Hey, nephew, hey, they got their plate. They like, drink straight. <laughs> I, I told him it's on you. Like, right, what? Sure. Like, what are you, what are you even sure. doing here, bro? <laughs> <laughs> right? 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 I, knew, I know you. Hey, we, 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 caught, we, we caught a few people right before the wedding that was coming for that thing. Mm. Which was, was like, oh, I know this person's going to be there. I know that person's going to be there. For the spectacle of it. And then we're uninvited because we figured it out. Oh, you sniffed it out. Sniffed, sniffed it, it out. out. Mm. And then I caught hell. And it ended up like, fuck your star-studded wedding. Uh, I said, ah, there, that, there it is. There it is, right there. There it is. Exactly what yeah. you're That's why you're not coming. I'm going right. to go I'm gonna go even deeper. Mav, no, we had two wedding crashers. Oh, that's right. Wait, that wasn't even invited at all. That no one knew. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, shit. That no one knew. No one the knew. TV, the movie. No Full one knew, on. and I, this is how this is how they got. In pictures. This I just sniff them out, though. This, this is how they got sniffed out. Had a celebrity friend walk by and they called him their real name that none of us call him. I don't want to say the name, but they call Say, for you, you walk by and they be like, what's up, Paul? <laughs> you like, what the fuck's Paul? And so you come to me, you like, hey, Brian, hey, hey, you know these niggas? I'm like, no. I'm like, why, what's wrong? He like, these niggas just call me Paul. Now, <laughs> everybody in the family know I'm PR. Ain't nobody, everybody gonna call me Paul. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. So that's how I got, that's how I wow. got sniffed out. So my security go over to him and say, hey, hey who y'all with? They like, Oh, 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 we were him. 
And when, when they said him, him turned around at the same time was like, hell no. Hell no, the motherfuckers ain't with me. <laughs> and they got put out, swear to God. They motherfuckers walked out with a plate and everything. Oh, that's hard. Smack that shit on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here, man. Yeah. Hey, that's my, that's my favorite movie, though. That's, that's, that's Yo, I'm telling you, I was at that shit for a couple hours. <laughs> By the way, in there. thinking of talking about celebration, we got to deal with one thing really quick, where we are. Just cut the ribbon for your fucking building. We're mm. in the LeBron James Innovation Center on Nike's campus, by the way. But how do you feel? Like, you just cut the ribbon. You've obviously been here, but it yeah. was like the first. It was thinking that, like, Jay-Z obviously just put out the new verse, like, we're just some corner boys with the corner office. Yeah, right. You a corner boy with your own fucking building. Yeah, man. You, this is yeah. your whole office. How does that feel? I mean, this has been three years in the making, or three years in coming. Um, it's been 20 years in the making. Well, yeah, yeah, it has. I you, think you're right, you're right. 30. You're right. You're right. I mean, I, I came here last year, and obviously because of, of the, the weight of the world and everything that's going on, there was no employees here. Mm -hmm. Maybe one or two employees was here to maybe open the door. But I brought my mom, I brought my, my wife, my kids, you know, some friends, my, my best friends from the, from the hometown, they all came and seen it. That was super, super duper emotional, super dope. Today was just a, a, another form of like how dope it is to be able to be here with the energy of the, all the employees that's like had a hand into it, you know, has, you know, worked for the, the, the brand for either as long as I've been here or before that or got on board a few years ago. So to walk down, you know, the hill today and to, to, to slap five with all the employees here, man, I'm like, the fuck are you doing here? How you get here? It doesn't make sense to me, bro. It don't, because I like every time something like this happens and I'm able to like try to appreciate it, it just literally take me back to like the, the hood, bro, and the grind and being un underprivileged and my mom, single parent and only child. I like, I, that's the first thing I'm walking out. So, you know, I might be smiling from the outside and I'm, I'm very genuine telling everybody, thank you. But I'm thinking like, how the fuck I get here, bro? Like, I don't, I, I want to add know, something man. to you, Ron. Listen, I've been with Nike for probably 30 years now as wow. an athlete. Coming here, and you as a black man and what you represent, it's probably hard for you to even process because you're living now, whereas for us on the outside as fans, we appreciate you and the fact that you've created this legacy and opened up so many doors for children and little black boys that look like you. Like, being in America sometimes, we all know and we've heard how tough and difficult it is from the neighborhoods that we come from. We're the first nice. generations who are earning millions and trying to understand how to create wealth. You've done it, and we cheer and feel so elated not just for you, but for all of us. Because when one of us make it, it feels like we've facts, all made it facts. in some way. So yeah, I, thank, sure, you no, thank you for so all much. that you've done, it means that so you much. do. We are so proud yeah, of you and thank you. thankful to be able thank to be you. in your building. I, I think, thank you so much. I think if I could just piggyback off one thing that, I, that, that stuck out of everything that you just said, to, to be able to give us a lane of opportunity. You know, we've, we've gone so long with not being heard. Like one of my biggest aspirations, one of my biggest goals was like, how the fuck can I create voice and power for us as black creators, as black people, not only to create the lane, but also to be able to gain and own our lane. That's what it's all about, man. I, get, I, sure. I was thinking about it earlier when you were cutting the ribbon, Nike is like, the holy grail for athletes, and they put your name on the building. Do you feel like this is one of your greatest accomplishments as an athlete? Do you think you... I mean, you remember in my younger days, I used to walk around here, and we used to go to Bo to train. You know, we used to be in Mia Hamm, we used to be in Michael's building. Of course. You know, doing meetings and things of that nature, and I used to always walk through those hallways and have these meetings or work out on those courts, and I'd be like, I'm getting me one of these. Uh, but as a, as a youngster, one you've won, you... Yeah, I was like, what? I'm uh -oh. getting me one of these. Uh -oh. First time I stepped on campus. Oh, shit. First time I stepped on campus, I was 17, 18 years old. I was like, Bron, you got to get one of these. And, and how, how are you going to... How are you going to be different but inspiring at the same time than all the other athletes? You know, everyone has their own building in a, in a, in a, because of what they contributed to not only the sport, but also 
you know, outside of their sport. But I wanted to, I wanted to have one, man. By, by, the, by the way, just to be clear, most people say, like, I want to get me one of these, like a watch. It's like about a building. I want to get me one of these. Like, I ain't gonna lie. That is crazy, bro. And this is because me and Brian have been playing against each other since we was, like, ninth grade. Bro, like, for sure. Tenth, eighth grade. So for me, like, walking up, it's like, it's ill because I'm, like, our freshman year, it was, like, six freshmen to go to Nike camp. Indianapolis, yep. <laughs> like that, like literally. Y'all go back Nike. that far? Yeah, we go back that yeah, far. Yeah, like wow. we Y'all the same class, year? Same, yep, same year, same wow. year. I've been, yeah. Same You've year. You've been dealing with I've this for years. my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> whole life. Boy, so let me do a question. Yeah, for sure. PJ, the gig is fucking up, man. Today, <laughs> this, we're done. You revealing, how the fuck did you find all this shit? <laughs> this nigga texts me one day. He's not giving up his plug. I'm telling you, he's not giving his plug up. a video. I have a video on my phone from him in his closet of my sneakers. <laughs> I'm like, how the fuck did you get my sneakers? Like, we were in a meeting the other day. They showed us some LeBron twos they're going to retro. I said to LeBron, or I said to the team, did, we, did they ever make these? And they were, because there was a picture of you carrying them in the arena. <laughs> the twos. The twos are far as you Yeah, you already know. They went to the Nike. He no. got to connect. I said, well, how the hell did he get them? They're like, Math, not if only If Nike that. doesn't know, how, how are you getting this? Please. Hey, I want to piggyback that before you go, because <laughs> they showed just... you walking into the arena with the two... With your shoes. Yes. <laughs> right? Before His I fingers is like this. The best part about those twos is we play, right, that night, and I, I held him because I know he ain't seen them. I know he ain't seen them. So it's a big game. We playing them, and we getting ready to do jump ball. We walk out, and I dap him up. And he looked at me, and he's like... Uh, for real, you serious? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. Like, I couldn't let the camera catch my foul. I was like, like, you serious? So for real, you serious? Yeah, I, just, I just started laughing. <laughs> I, I already knew. No. I already knew he hadn't seen me in a while, so it was, that was... But you're not going to talk about... No, he's not, not going to his plug. Is this something you were like, I'm going to be the king of this shit, this sneaker I just shit. always did it. It was just part of my life, right? Like, younger, like, going to get J's, like, I used to wait in line, like, to before school. Like, literally, I'm about to be late first period. It don't matter. I need these... I need these Concord 11s. So that was just always my life from the beginning. To be clear, no one can fuck with you in the NBA in terms of when it comes You're to You're undisputed kids. king. How you gonna deal with a guy? <laughs> how you gonna deal with a guy that will switch his shoes every quarter? <laughs> oh, he'll wear four different shoes this in the game? He will wear those in the first quarter, these in the second quarter, <laughs> horses in the third quarter. No way. Are you serious? Listen, he'll wear, he'll wear uh, wedges in the fourth. Like, like, <laughs> wedges? They got on, 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 on flip-flops in the fourth quarter. I'm like, come on, man. You're superstitious? Yeah, yeah you I'm superstitious. So it's the thing. It's always, like, it's got to It's my shoes. Like, <laughs> like especially with him. Like, he get going the but first. Really, I'm like, yeah, like, in bring the other one. It's time to go. As soon as I come out, we start, like, because I'm matching his minutes. So it's like, as soon as he come out, I'm like, I got to switch my shoes. It's my shoes. That's all. I got to switch. Oh, my gosh. I, OK, I got a question for y'all. When you talk about, like, having that dog mentality, like, the way you guys play, do you feel like that, that you're born with that, or do you feel like you learn that? <clears throat> I think it's a bit of both. It can be brought out of you? Yes. But I, don't, I, don't, I think you have to a be born dog? with it in you. Like I'm saying, when you're young, right? Young, I think, you guys you talking play about when you're young. I think you gotta be, I think you, I think your surroundings growing up turns you into a dog, I think. You think it's surrounding. So now, what's gonna happen to our kids? That's 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 in the that's what I'm scared of. That three yeah. four car garage. Well, y'all might got six car garage <laughs> houses. Like, that's what just... is the solution to the next generation that I think is you growing up without having to have the be in the fight that we were in? How I define dog is when you wake up in the morning and put your feet on the floor, you have a purpose. You're like, I am going to get this fucking done, and that's it. And I think. I have kids, and with my kids, I just ho hope and try and instill them a, a reason to wake up in the morning. We we had to have get up. You had, like, no food. Right. My mom had no money. We right. didn't have much. So it was like the purpose was to make money. But money won't be my kids' purpose, but I hope to give them a different purpose, which will make them a... Meaning they will go... That's my... Yeah. That's how yeah, I, I just hope, I, I think from, a, from the that perspective, as far as our kids and things of that nature, I just hope that they... I hope we've instilled enough vision in them that they look and see the passion that we put into what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. You know, nice. and, 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 and they can relate from that because everything that I learned from growing up also, I mean, obviously I had to, I didn't have shit, so like I needed to go get it, but I also saw the determination that my mom had. You know, I also saw, you know, my uncles and what they instilled as well. So like, 
You just hope that you're doing it the right way and you're grinding, because we're still grinding. Right. The right way that when your kids are looking and you don't know when they look and they like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. Pops out there grinding, mom's out there grinding. They, you know, you just hope that you you've done enough. Yeah. You've done enough. That's something like you can, I can never. We can never teach our kids what we've been through. Like, there's, it's impossible. I can't take them back to the hood. Right. I can't, like, make them wake up smelling crack smoke. Like, they right, can't right, understand right, that. Right. Like, that's what I grew up in. So it was like waking up and then people in society telling me, oh, I'm too small and you can't do this. This ain't for you. You're not 6'8", a wing and athletic. Like, you, you, can't, you can't go there. You can't do that. And it's like that everyday telling. It's like, all right, bet. Now I'm a dog because I'm going to show you. Now I'm going to punish this dude. Because of all y'all and what y'all talking yeah. about, are you? Like, I'm going to punish the guy that y'all talking is supposed to be that guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right, 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 right. PJ, how many years boy? did you play overseas, buddy? Four and a half. What was that like? Were you like, I'm determined to get back to the NBA? I belong? No, bro. It was like out of my mind. NBA I was, was out trying of your to, mind. I was so busy trying to get better and trying to win. Because you and I'm in a whole other situation, which, mind you, like, you playing in Madrid tonight and Barcelona tomorrow. <laughs> you in Moscow. I'm like, fun. this is crazy. <laughs> oh, what, is, what? We got a day off. We going to Paris. I'm like, oh, man, I'm in heaven. This is everything. But it was like just trying to better myself and get better for myself and my team that I'm on. If you look at the vision, like, way down the road, like, yo, in 10 years, I'm going to win me a chip. Like, I, if I was here and told you, I'd be lying. Like, never. Never. And as a player, you all, you were a very special player because you're a lot like Draymond, but he's been on one team. You've been moved around, to, but you're always on a really good team. You're and a always, key piece. And, and a key, key piece. Key yeah. play in your mind, why do you always get moved, though? Because I choose to move. You choose to move. I want to move. You want to move. What talk makes you want to move? Shit, talk. Uh, for real. What I makes you want to move? Like, like, why like, you want to move? You know, but come on, man. We know the NBA, man. God's fickle. Like, we, as he's been, Draymond's been blessed to be on the same team. That's super blessing, but guys, Get funny, man. You know, like, oh, I'm done here, bro. Mates. All right, they, everybody started leaving. So, all right, now I got to figure out another situation for myself. Like, right. stuff happens. All right, right. all right, well, let me see what I can do now. All right, right. right. Oh, so you mean like, you'll be like, oh, I'm here, I'm good, then it's yeah, shit like, around oh, you change. Yeah, and it should change, and all right, that. Mm, but you always get picked up by a good team. Good team. Oh, I'm going to choose a good team for sure, because I'm a, I'm a realist with myself, right? I know what I do. Can't nobody tell me what I do and what I can't do. I know what I do better than anybody. So I can look at a team and be like, yo, like, I chose Milwaukee. Like, that was hand-picked. We you had can, a few you can teams. Use your skill set and I'm like, yo, them. oh, I'm like, oh, if I go to Milwaukee, that's going to be, oh, good. But Dre, and Tuck, the, another question I want to ask y'all to P's point. Wait, J Dre didn't get a chance uh, to answer the first one about being a dog. Do you feel like you were a dog. born When did you realize it was your right. superpower? I think for me, I've always been a dog. Like, growing up in Saginaw, I had to be that to get on the court. Like, mm -hmm. that was just how it had to be. I never had to be the dog that I am today to get back on the court until I got to the NBA. Like, that's, that's what got me on the floor. Because, you know, like, coming out of college, I was player of the year, all of that. But I quickly realized, ain't none of that shit getting me on the floor with this team. <laughs> <laughs> right? you can, you're going to try to fucking shoot them jump hooks, that Jay. Ain't none of that shit about to get me on this floor. What was going to get me on the floor for the Warriors was to go bully somebody because I realized, like, oh, that's, that's missing here. Like, nobody here is bullying anybody. Nobody's here speaking up. Nobody's, like, just bringing that tenacity to the floor. So I, I realized, like, my second day there, they need somebody to bring that dog. Right. And that'll be my need. way onto the floor. Then I realized the moment you forget your way on the floor in the NBA... I, don't, I can go fucking shoot 50% from three next year. If I'm just going to go shoot 50% from three and not be a dog, they're going to get me the hell out of here. Out of here. <laughs> like, the moment you forget what got you there, out of there. you're done. They're going to get me out. And so at that point, I realized, all right, I got to keep that. And everything I add is cool, but I got to keep that. Now, did you see that when you came out of high school and went to Michigan State? Was it like that? It's was it kind of that same thing? Like you was a freshman there and you was like maybe not playing as much. And then you looked and was like, oh shit, maybe there's not a guy like Draymond here. I gotta bring that dog. Or was it like, or did you come out of high school and was already there and they were like, you know, put you out there and it was just already instilled in it? It was already instilled in me, but yeah. we we had a guy like that. We had Travis Walton, who okay, yeah, that's your like, dog. You know, yeah, Travis, yeah. you was like, the guy, man. You wasn't trying to no, be that dude, up, man. You was the guy, no, man. Come on, my, man. My freshman year at Michigan State, I played nine minutes a game. I averaged three points and three assists. Wow, I mean, three really? points and three rebounds. Wow. Like that's 
I had 127 points on the year. I had 127 rebounds on the year. <laughs> I'll never forget it. You've been consistent your whole life. 3.3 <laughs> and 3.3. That's what I averaged. And, wow. But, but we had Travis in that. But for me, I don't, I don't know how to shut up. Like, I, I'm not. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. If I think you Draymond don't know how to shut up, I would have never guessed that. <laughs> if I think something, I'm going to say it. Mm -hmm. And at Michigan State, it wasn't really like that. Like, it's going to be like, shut up, you punk ass freshman. Oh, he was going to say it to you. No, he, no, he would tell me that every time. And I'd be like, all right. And then he'd say something else. Be like, hey, that really don't make sense. He'd be like, you punk ass freshman, shut the fuck up. Yeah. And before I knew it, he started to like, in the meetings, he's directing shit towards me. Mm. Like, well, Draymond, what do you think? Mm -hmm. or, he knew you was the one. And he from knew that the point one. on, it just that's it why you were, That's why Izzo was at your wedding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dre and PJ, is it every night you show up to the arena and you, like, I don't want to be the dog tonight? Because y'all always show up and get the toughest assignment. Y'all got to guard LeBron. Y'all got to guard KD. KD. Y'all got Giannis. Is yeah. it every night you drive into the arena like, fuck, I don't want to do this. Like, not tonight. Like... It's not a night that I show up and I don't want to be a dog, <clears throat> especially if it's a Bron coming in, if it's a Giannis coming in, because them are the games I live for. Easy. You ready for them? Easy. It's the nights I show up and we playing against the sorry motherfuckers. The Sacramento Kings. I can't play. <laughs> Who, the Kings? <laughs> the Kings stinks. <laughs> <laughs> you name them. Yeah. <laughs> OKC right now. OKC. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. It's the, hard Kings, the Kings make it better this year, I hope. But, you know, it's, it's like... Like, how am I supposed to get myself up with, like, with this engine and, Because you done like, played so many big-time games, like... like, like to fucking, on, on this soft Tuesday, yeah. to fucking play yeah, the oh Orlando to be, yeah, Magic, you know, are you to kidding add, me? To add to what Mav is saying, too, and it's sometimes that you, like, especially in y'all, what y'all do, y'all roles... Yeah, y'all ...that you was like, I just wish it was another motherfucker with me, too. For sure. Yeah. I just wish it was, I just wish sure. it was another, not another PJ, not another yeah. Draymond, sure. but another motherfucking dog that'd be like, Day Day, I got, I got it from this court. Oh, for sure. man. PJ, oh, what about you? Night, how you feel? Nights? Is it nice you show up like? It's like, it, like he said, it, it really is like that. It's the bad games in the bad city, and <laughs> I'm just like, bro, like, like you know what? But then I try to. Like, I try to make somebody talk shit or something. Uh, like, like, I a need fan? a crowd. Like, and PJ's you say, a LeBron stuff, hater. Blah, blah. Like, you I say. need that. It's the oh, yeah, word. And then the dude that I'm guarding, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like one of those. And now he said something like, what? Oh, okay, all right, bet. Like, I so, need that. Like, yeah, it's, it's jump like, start, like a you gotta job. look yeah, for yeah. little motivation, especially. I, I saw, to, to matter of fact, I saw an interview you did where you were talking about, like, we live in such a, like, image conscious, like, generation where no one wants to be embarrassed, everyone wants to look good. And I saw an interview where you said, Someone could drop 50, score their 50th point, and you're gonna be there for the next one and make it really yeah, tough. Yeah, about KD during the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm there. Like, show like, me again. Like you, you drop 40, show me 42. Show like, me I'm again. Here every possession. Show like, me where again. Where did that come from? You like, gotta, bro, and that's the part where you gotta like kind of black out, right? It's like he is tearing my ass up, and I know it, <laughs> and I gotta sit here. But it's like, nah, I want to win that bad, right? That was the whole thing when me and Katie got each other face. That's what you were saying? Yeah, I'm not going nowhere. I just kept saying, I'm not going nowhere, bro. <laughs> I'm not, okay, but I'm not going nowhere. So we're going to do this. We're going to be here seven games every second. Every time you catch the ball full court, 94 feet, I'm going to be right here. But Katie's your boy. Do you ever turn it on and off with, with, with your friend? Like, Yeah, no, for sure. We still... Man, it's the, like, same, he, as, it's the yeah. same as me and Dede's relationship. Facts. It's the same as me and Dede's relationship. Yeah. We, which, we, is, which is an interesting thing most people don't understand, right? We were talking about this last week. Yeah. How some people may think, how can you guys be friends? You guys are whatever. And Dre's comment was, I don't want to speak for him, was like, people don't understand. I'm going to try to take Bron's head off. Not dirty. Bro, and Bron would want it no other way. He I expects don't. me to do I that. Don't. He's going to try to take Flex. my fucking head Listen, off. Listen, if my mama played for the Clippers... <laughs> it's on. If my mama played for the Clippers and she in the lane, she getting punched on. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope she, I hope she be like, you know what, son? You got, you got that one. I'm coming back for your ass, though. Absolutely. I hope so. Lisa, you're from Compton. Yeah. We obviously just saw Serena. She said it's over. Who knows? But it's something about that water. That's what I was going to ask you. What something is it about, about that Compton water now? Though? Kendrick, Dr. Dre, oh, Venus, yeah. Serena, you. What is it? Anthony Anderson. 
We can DeMar, go on. DeMar, 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 DeMar DeRozan, yeah. What is it about Compton? Compton is really, it's the inner city. Um, at one time, it used to be mostly all black. Um, but people who were, who had a lot of pride. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like it's just run down where you just feel like you don't have, because when you, now that you've traveled the world, you see like, Compton was fine. We really wasn't that bad off, but people would be like, dang, how does it feel to be poor? I remember when my, actually one of my cousins asked me that when I was young and I was like, oh, poor, like who's poor? She was like, no, cause you guys are poor. She's like, you, you're poor. And I'm like, oh, are, are we poor? I didn't know we was poor. But I'm like, I had my own room. My sister had her room. We shared a bathroom, you know what I mean? So it, it's all relative to like what you have. So I, I think I didn't really know that we didn't have until I got a little bit older. When my mom was a truck driver, she drove an 18-wheeler truck across country, so we had a living housekeeper. Mm. So then when it kind of got where, you know, lights, water, you know, you have to pick which one you want to kind of keep on, or the pork and beans, and the, you know, right, you start right. to realize you don't have, like, talking our talk now. Talking talk, 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 You got bread, but you don't really, you know, yeah. those types of things. But I think when you're a kid, I, I still didn't feel like we was just struggling. It just was the life that we had. We had a lot of love in our family. My mom, a single parent. I have two sisters, one older, one younger. And I think me being the middle child made me the, the fighter, the survivor. Yeah. Like, I take direction well. I'm a follower, but I'm also a listener because I have a younger sister to take care of. And when you retired, you still had more playing. Like, how did you know it was time for you to step away? My last game, I had 20 points and 10 rebounds. Exactly. I felt like I didn't want to stay out there until, like, somebody started blocking my shot. I'm not good at, like, <laughs> I don't want to stay out there where I'm just like, oh, I just got to go rebound. Like, so the I, game told you no. That's too much for me. Like, yeah. for my, I work hard. For your standards like, for yourself. Yeah, oh, facts, yeah. I'm a hard worker. You know, I've had some amazing teammates. But when I start to see that, Actually, I had a child, too, so that's another thing. Having a child and coming back to play. I feel like you were so good, you could have played with the baby in you. <laughs> Man, I'm trying child to tell you. had eight months dunking that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but it changed, it changed your, my body changed, and I could see that, like, in some instances where I would, like, go, like, rebound, snatch a board, I could either box out or get the board, and that that option for me was, like, I couldn't handle it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You get older, though. Yeah. Think about it. How many, how many rebound, how many uh, shots you run down off that backboard yeah. where it was just natural? Now you like, mm, yeah, I'm gonna no. let that fool go right now. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna <laughs> let that one go. You gonna let it go because yeah. you're starting to get to that point. And I saw it. I saw it where a rebound was like, I would think about it. before I was just gone. I didn't hit somebody. I didn't grab it. I'm, I'm gone. Now, and it got to a point where I remember thinking like. Why I didn't go get that ball? Like, why I didn't get it? And I didn't know. And I was like, it's time for me to go. And Lisa, can I ask you one thing? As great as these three gentlemen are, one thing they'll never understand is having a child while playing. Talk a little bit about, like, what that's like when you're playing. After. Yeah, and coming back, especially with the bar you have for yourself. Um, I think it's, it's just life-changing. It, it really is. I mean, I, I've been married to basketball. My relationship was with basketball. 6.30 in the morning, I'm on the track. Like, I've done so much during the day. I go to my trainer, go home, sleep, go back, go play with the fellas at UCLA. Like, I've been playing ball and just married to the game so long that once I got married, I was still good because my husband was, you know, my husband was a pilot, so he could travel, he could come to my games, we were good. But once I had my daughter, I knew I'm a perfectionist, I'm a lover. I was always like, I don't want nobody knowing my children more than I know them. I, don't, I know I could afford to have help, but I don't want help through the night somebody else get up. No, I'm not made like that. Like, I need to, my baby needs to know me. And I felt like I, that was the first time in my life where I realized you can't give 100% to the game so you felt anymore. like you had to pick? Oh, for sure. I was nursing. I, would, I nursed my daughter. I'd stop. I'd go to practice. Breast filling back up. I had to get back home. You know, it was like pumping. It was, it's just a, it's a sacrifice. And it's How much like, size? it's a sacrifice that I, would, I wouldn't change, but I chose my daughter. I chose my, being a mom and a wife for me was like so amazing. That's fine. And I chose that. And I had I to let the game go. No, 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 no. Yeah, could you do it? No. On, Pick my kids over basketball right, right now? You love it too much. I mean, not having Savannah. Long, longer Savannah's yeah. in, in the yeah, nest. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's my lady. I'm, I, I feel like because she is the shit with the kids. 
I wouldn't pick my kids to stop playing ball, but I will stop ball to make sure my kids are straight. Right, of course. You know what I'm saying? So it is a median when it comes to that. So if I'm doing something, I'm playing ball, or I'm training, or if it's a, even if it's a game or something, I get a, we get a phone call, if Ramos get a phone call, and he come up behind the bench and say, hey, listen, hey, Zuri, I, I'm sorry, I, I got to go. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because family is everything. Yeah. The game of basketball has given me everything that and more that I could ever dream of. But the engine don't move unless the family's straight. Like, I just, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, 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 that's how I And move. to finish your question, that's the biggest difference, because I'm the mom. Exactly. I'm, you are I'm Savannah. Savannah. Right, she's Savannah, and right. I'm 100% in that. That, right. that means more to me than basketball. That's, that's why I sacrifice that's it. And that's thing. why I have no regrets, because right. I love my husband and I love my children and family first. Did you hear the little stunt she gave us though when she said, she stunted on us when she said, yeah, you know my husband's a pilot so he just fly into the game. <laughs> yeah, he just get on his plane Shut and just, you know. Give my baby shout out. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, I get on there with him after the game and just leave. I heard you, bro, bro, let me ask you. Last week we were in Columbus. I met you there to go to the State football game, but you were there with your son going on a college visit, which you obviously never had a chance to do for yourself. Man, right. Did it feel selfishly? It se it, selfishly, were you a little bit like, I want to see this for myself, I too? Kept, I kept asking Bronny, like, how you feel? You know, how you feel about this? He's like, I feel good, man. Like, I'm excited about it. But it was a little, like, a two-way-ended question, because I was asking him, asking myself at the right. same time. <laughs> you know, like, Savannah didn't go on no college visits. I didn't go on no college visits. This is Bronny's first college visit. So, like, we're all virgins going into Columbus for the first time. So we was, like, all soaking it up. So, like, I'm sitting there. I'm sitting in the office with the coach, and they're giving a pitch about why Bronny, you know, will fit here on campus, why they feel like he'd be a part of, you know, Buckeye Nation, why he'd do this. And then Bronny goes down and puts the uniform on. You know, I I'm looking at Bronny, but I'm like, I'm looking at myself at, like, 18. Like, if I would have stepped on a college wow. campus, put, it, put the uniform on, and then we went down to the field, and I heard, we want Bronny. That, that shit was, like, so crazy. I've been to Ohio State games, but I've never been on a, on a college visit. Yeah, a recruiting to where trip. It was recruiting. a recruiting yeah. visit. So you still, like, that That blows my mind. Bro, still. Bro, you, like, what? Hold up. For dudes that, like, really. <laughs> <laughs> I played four years. I did, yeah, yeah, I had no vision of going to the NBA out of high school. Like, to, for that, for you to, like, really still, like, like, that's crazy to say For him to feel like he still may have missed out yeah, on something. Like, like, yeah, like being in the dorm? Like no, you, you missed, definitely like, missed out you, on something. You was in the, you was in, in the crib in, <laughs> no, like, no, no, in no, the no, 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 He missed out right. on something. I like, used to have this conversation it. with Jermaine O'Neal. Um, J.O. was one of my vests my second year in the league. And he'd be like, yeah, motherfucker, I went to the University of Cash. Yeah. And I said, J.O. That's J.O. line right there. If you know what we all getting sick. cash now. Yeah. But I experienced something you didn't. And I got to the same place. But l let me tell you, you miss some shit not going to college. There's what do you experiences that you What do you, you miss the get. most about college, right? The atmosphere. Yeah. Like, the atmosphere, the rivalries. Like, people talk about NBA rivalries. That shit ain't nothing. Like, yeah. guess what? If Michigan State sucked this year, and Michigan sucked this year, the Michigan and Michigan State game nice. is still going to be a fucking battle. You don't get that shit in the NBA. There are just certain things about college that, like, <laughs> I know you lived an incredible life. I think, there are certain I think things Tuck about disagrees, college though. That listen, you miss. Listen, listen, what? No, I mean, I feel you, but... I don't feel you. Like, you don't miss nothing in college. <laughs> Man, hell big. Listen, bro, you, all, even with all that, like, I was still going back to my dorm. Yeah, but you was a basketball TV player at a football and, school. Bro, I, I, sure. I, was, I was at a school. I, I don't care what school player. I would have went to. It didn't matter because nah, I still ain't have shit. Like, I was really, like, starving, like, hungry. How many years did you play, P? Three. And it was like, yo, like, man, can I leave yet? Like. Before we got there, can we just talk about Serena's impact, though? Absolutely. Just, Absolutely. What is Serena, like, her meaning to, like, sport, culture? I mean, just from a, from, from a dominant standpoint, from, a, from a, 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 a black girl of power standpoint, with the influence that she has, and community for, for little black girls, for black boys as well, just trying to be anything in life. I mean, she, she broke so many barriers, especially in a sport for our color, 
that wasn't looked at. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you had, you know, you sprinkling in a little bit here, a little bit of there, and, 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 and tennis, but it wasn't looked at it like that. So for her to come in when she came in in 96, 97, whatever, and then she got her sister with her, and they rocking. Like, not only did it show how great she can be, it could also, you know, siblings fight so much, it show how siblings can do it together as well and grind together. And not and, having and to conform to, either, not, doing it their yeah, way. and not have no type of animosity to me or you or you or me. You heard what she said. I'm, Serena's nothing without Venus. Facts. Serena not only showed women what was possible, Serena showed athletes what was possible. And not just black athletes. Serena showed white athletes what was possible. Serena showed Asian athletes what was possible. And I think, I was reading an article the other day where some lady named Court. Uh, Margaret Court. Margaret, Margaret, Margaret Court. She yeah. has 24. Yeah. Serena has 24. Yeah. And she's like, uh, S Serena never she's admired yeah, me. I, that's, yeah, that's shit. That shit I, I thought it was that's fucking that's ridiculous. Blue, that shit blew me like, too. Like, oh, first me. off, stop making this moment about, about you. About you. Like, exactly. That's what she Stop making this did. moment about you. Secondly, what she showed me was how out of touch with reality that she is. Because you're sitting here talking about you be her 24 to 23. <laughs> and that is the least relevant point right. in right. all of this. Right. How about what this black woman had to go through right. to become what she right. became? And the impact like, alone. The impact, sure. like, right. you, you didn't have to fight the battle right. that Serena fought just to get to the tennis match. Right. See, the tennis was the easy part. Right. Like, that, you, you go play tennis in your sleep, like, that's the easy part. But what she had to go through as a black girl right, wearing beads yeah. and, and fucking tennis, right. and you want to make this about your 24? Get the fuck out of here. Yes, like, sir. that's bullshit. You're comparing your numbers to this black girl who changed culture. I think when you think about, sometimes people miss what it means to be black in America. That's, that, it's not the same. It's not like she just showed up to a sport, was able to play a sport, and fell short. Yes. You know, it, it's not that. It's... Everything you're saying, being in Compton where we've been, where you saw the movie, there was no, there wasn't even any nets on the court. Like right. there was gangsters selling dope on the court. Right. Like they have, sur they are survivors of America trying to live the American dream in a place that this is our country too. Like we don't know any other country to love that we play for, we put on the red, white, and blue for Absolutely. and represent this country. And it's so amazing that we can be here wanting to be and fit in and work hard and, and just make it and have the American dream and be denied that every time you turn left and right, not based on anything other than your color. Like, it's out of our control. It's amazing to me. So when you talk about Serena and Venus, they are synonymous to me. They have defied all the odds. True queens, man. And, and fought true. against Serena, the truth. Everything. Man, the truth. Everything. Coming out of Compton, so. Yeah. Lisa, I just saw, a for those of you that saw it, phenomenal WNBA game in Vegas yep. versus Seattle. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. The level, we were talking about earlier, the level of basketball, I was just mind blown. For you, as one of like the pioneers of WNBA, like how do you feel the game has evolved? Does it still have a long way to go? Like from where you sit? And I yeah, what changes question. you want? Yeah, exactly. Good. If you, if it's one thing that you, I don't want to say change, that you feel that can help the WNBA's game out. Help what the game out. Okay, so I think the game is looking great. I think it's evolved great. I believe that player for player, players are more talented, faster. You can see they're getting that individual training, ball handling skills, shooting. The game is phenomenal. I thought they're playing at a high level. I'm very proud of them. I, I support the WNBA still. I will always, you know, obviously we'd love to have Brittany back home. That, that's yeah, important. For sure. Shout, to out yep. Shout, Shout out BG. Shout out to BG. BG. She's yep. never, you know, far from our thoughts. Yep. But the WNBA is rocking. What could we have more? I mean, I just think, you know, from a salary standpoint, it, it'd be great for the women to be able to make more money. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work. I think I saw something that said, like, one player that makes maybe $12 million on the NBA team could cover the whole, like, the whole WNBA salary. Yeah, that's what I'm So that's kind of, like, crazy. And, it, and again... You know, we're, we're what, 26 years young, so it's not like we're, we're comparing ourselves to the NBA, but I do feel like the pay gap would be something that, you know, we could just take a donation around the NBA, maybe. 
Maybe, maybe one night y'all don't go to the casinos. I, I have something okay. on this, though, because it pisses me off. It pisses me off because I don't think there's anyone in America that supports the WNBA more than NBA players. 100%. Like, the NBA players support the WNBA, like... The most. More than we probably support the fucking NBA. And it bothers me. You shouldn't be bothered because the WNBA players, I can tell you 100%, and we had a meeting for our 25th anniversary where, like, do Zooms with the the veteran, the legends of the league or whatever, and just talking about it. And I told them on that call, the number one supporter that we have, you guys never focus on, and that is the NBA players. When LeBron wore that orange hoodie, I told them that hoodie was just sitting there with the logo on it. When he wore that hoodie, it went viral. And I explained you to went them. went rings to get that shit down to the bubble, though. Yeah, what? Yeah, that could They would not send us those hoodies. Yeah. Really? But, uh, but, but I explained to them, I said, you guys don't even use, our number one allies that have supported us from day one are the NBA players. I said, they tweet, they follow us, they come to our games, we don't highlight them. They are our number one allies. They have the most followers. You guys are targeting the wrong people. It was, was the, it was definitely a damn moment when I heard, like, some of the upper, uppers at the WNBA office. Yeah. You spoke to them yourself? No, I didn't. This heard from a credible source, and they said that that when we come to the games, they try not to put us on the telecast as much because they want it to be shown as a WNBA game. They want the girls to be shown, and they don't want to show us on TV as Terrible much. Terrible idea. I so, disagree with Josie, that. What was their response? I disagree with that. When you said this to the... Because they've changed that. It's they've crazy. changed that. Why wouldn't you highlight the fact that Draymond Green, if you come and watch a Sparks game, or LeBron James, obviously watch anybody's game, you know what I'm saying? It's saying that you came, you took the time out of your day to come to watch a women's game because you value what you're seeing. That's, yes. it's actually the other, it's reverse. Like, we should be valuing that. There's a million things you could be doing that's amazing. So Absolutely. when you take the time out of your summer right. to come to a WNBA game, that's a highlight. I'll tell, tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing, Lisa. They they making a they making a huge mistake this week. All right. Game five of Connecticut and Chicago is Thursday. Yeah. That is that is week one of the NFL, NFL. between yes. the Rams and the Bills, yep. and then game one of the WNBA Finals is on Sunday okay. at 1 o'clock. Yeah, what, what's up with that? What are you saying? Move. That's you can't NFL. have it on you the opening. We can't day. have it on the same day as the opening of the NFL. Everybody yeah, that's, that's an L. That's an L. You can't so run who's that. ever running that, they, 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 they're, not, they're not thinking yeah. outside. Why they is can't, that happening? I don't, I don't know. I've I seen that. It seems was, pretty logical. It's pretty logical. Because you can lie. move to the game, right? Yeah, I mean, well, it could very easily be a Friday and Tuesday. I don't know, but we need to get that. We got to get that tweet out early. They need to move that. That's a bad idea. <laughs> That's a bad idea. They damn sure ain't going to come out on, and they ain't going to be on the shop early enough, I'll tell you that. We got to yeah. do some editing around this one. Yeah. That's a bad idea. They got to change my hairline before this shit come out. <laughs> I feel like you are like never in a fight, a tussle, your demeanor. I'm you can gonna have to disagree with the fight. <laughs> <laughs> I never talk shit. Never. I don't say nothing. I'll be quiet. I think I just do it a little bit more strategic. <laughs> is that what it is? I down Western Road. Might go down to GOD. I make sure that Northside eat. And still.